Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Membership Voice. I'm Piero O'Shea, the uh, the host for tonight's webinar, and I have with me right here in the, in the same room, Nick Lim, the president of the uh, Rotary Club of Elizabeth Key here, here in Perth. It's great to have you all with us tonight. What I'll do now is introduce Nick Lim, the president of the uh, of Rotary of Elizabeth Key, an organisational psychologist by profession, mm. a change maker by inclination, a communicator, <laughs> a natural communicator, someone who has been the heart and soul of, or one of the, the driving force, I suppose I should say, be, behind the, uh, the philanthropic core of Rotary of Elizabeth Key. I think it's fair to say that you made a major contribution there, Nick. Okay, thank you. And that uh, you've come in as president of of Elizabeth Key uh, with a vision to continue the improvements of your some of your, your remarkable predecessors, mm. and in so doing, of course, you're working with them to take those those past or to to encourage those past presidents to work with you in this radical new organisation. So. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it tonight, mate. So please enlighten us. Well, <laughs> thanks, Caro. Uh, it's a delight and pleasure to be with you all this evening. And <clears throat> this meeting has been uh, about 15 months in the making. Uh, Caro spoke to me some time ago <laughs> and we've been we've been bouncing back and forwards. So tonight I'm going to share a little bit about the challenges that uh uh, faced road really is with key, particularly in the time of COVID. <clears throat> and I think there are some issues that uh, are shared with other membership-based organisations. Um, I'll share with you some of the challenges and a little bit about how we overcame them and are still exploring how we can overcome those challenges. Um, <clears throat> so I will just share my screen and walk you through. I'm going to be flipping through a uh, PowerPoint presentation and also uh, Miro, uh, an application, a web-based application that I'll uh, talk to you a bit about uh, as we go through. So tonight we're looking at innovation and evolution, the next chapter at a Rotary, Rotary Elizabeth Key. And uh, I was, uh, I came on board as a president uh, in this financial year. So we've really had uh, what is it, five months at the helm. And as Kiro mentioned, come off the back of a number of strong uh, presidents who um, had their own flavour and style, but have, um, I guess, were building on top of their uh, uh, their good work. So as a club, we uh, realised that the world was, that we knew last year had changed forever. Uh, we didn't think it was going back um, and neither did the peers or those members who were interested in joining us. But our generation are up to big things and we want to give back at a time that can fit into their busy lives. Uh, it was becoming more present to us that it was uh, uh, difficult to expect the same uh, participation that we had in previous uh, versions of our, of our club. Um, so it's, it, it also was present to us that uh, Rotary is committed more than ever to having a big impact in the world, um, yet there were some major challenges with attracting and retaining our members. Um, even as a young club, uh, these uh, I've heard many other uh, Rotary organisations say the same thing, but we're a young club. We have uh, uh, about the average age is probably about 35, 30, 33 maybe. Uh, and it was difficult to, uh, to attract people over. How do you convince people to pay membership and then give up their time willingly? Uh, and I probably still struggle with that, that, that challenge. Uh, we've got to find the right value proposition. Um, we were, we were, uh, another challenge was in delivering projects and delivering them in a consistent way that had an impact, not just made us feel good. And finally, it was to retain cultural relevance in a digital world. Um, the way that we worked, the way that we connected, was completely uh, changing. So as a team, we decided that we would continue to evolve with the world that we lived in, uh, embracing the digital uh, capabilities that were so familiar to us at work, yet may not have been implemented as readily in uh, a membership organisation such as Rotary. We decided to experiment with new methods to enhance what we already uh, did. So new ways of running projects, new ways of coordinating each other, uh, but at the heart of it, we were committed to holding on to the values that uh, 
that called us to Rotary in the first place. Um, and lastly, we wanted to champion a new way of Rotary generosity and uh, and within our or our community. So uh, to maybe expand on this a little further, I'll take you over to a Miro board to describe what those structural uh, changes were. Um, and I'd love to grab questions in the chat uh, as I go through. This isn't a static presentation of me just talking at you the whole time. Um, my partner in crime here, Kero, will help to moderate that. Um, if you can drop questions in, I would love to, to hear from you uh, and hear if you've got any, any thoughts. So, so what do I mean by that kind of a challenge statement, that, that issue? Well, the first thing is that our organisation, like many others, is set up like a pyramid. Uh, we have a president with a number of, uh, of directors operating underneath that. And so that's great in a corporate organisation uh, where you have people being paid as a, on a business as usual basis to come in and work nine to five. But there's some challenges with our, our organisation. And I'll get to that in a moment. Underneath those roles sits some pyramids. We call those committees. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a hierarchy there with... Uh, deputies supporting the director to move work through and underneath that you have a membership base yeah uh, and the common challenge is how do we get people down in the pink up into the gray who are nominate for the green because every time we just fall over the line at, uh, <laughs> at the AGM to try and get willing people to, to join us um, and the problem is that uh, that the work and our orientation uh, really gives us the wrong focus so let's look at this another way. Uh, at the end of the day, there are really only two things that we need to do as a club. The first is to deliver for our members, to give them a great experience and to attract members. Uh, that can be identified as this first block here. <clears throat> and the second, let me just ungroup this, is to deliver projects. So I'll call these yellow and I'll put this one in a different color. But the problem is that yellow up here and good old yellow and good old pink have to contend with the same voices that provide a service to them. You see, all these other green roles are actually in service of pink and, and yellow to deliver members, to attract and retain members and to deliver projects. What's more is that all these green dots, these green roles actually help out with both of these things as we already know it. They already attract and retain members and they already deliver on projects. But why weren't we acknowledging that? And, and lastly, it creates a pinch point for both of these two, not only in reporting at our board, but uh, how we, deliver value and, and work in uh, in our club. We're always waiting on or expecting. Uh, the pressure was mounting for those, both of those roles. And I'd say that the president similarly was under that level of pressure or you know scrutiny at times. So they could probably put them down there. So how do we overcome this? How do we maybe work in a better way? Uh, well, the way that, I, that we've tackled this is to acknowledge the work that sits underneath that. Uh, and I'll explain that more in a moment. But back to the slides. And I'm just going to pause to see if there's any questions. But most importantly, I'm going to pause to see if you're still with me. Because I might be talking about things that uh, there might be new content. So if you're still with me, can you say yes, good to go, keep going? Or if you have a question, drop, drop a question in there. We don't want we don't want people unmuting at this stage. No, no, just add a question no, to the chat. Yes, there we go. The Good chat. to go. There's Derek, no worries. Yep. Yep. Yes, Queen. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So we rearranged ourselves <clears throat> uh, into a very very simple uh, way of organising. So if you think of like the a, a coin or. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, well, let's take a coin. There's two sides to that coin. One side was membership. The other side is project. And I'll describe how we uh, we set that up. So there's an environment in which we all operate in. Uh, our organisation operates in an environment. And 
uh, we have on one side the squads, which are the heart of the club. Directors, as you can see, is in blue, and members, as you can see, in the colours. We have rearranged ourselves to bring accountability to every director to own a squad. What does that mean? It's kind of like a form room. So a director is responsible for the relationships, the engagement, the participation, the understanding where that, the capacity of that person. And what that did was bring us much more closely into the needs, desires, and interests of our members, where the work happens to start with. We stopped asking the membership director, hey, when's the new, where are the new members coming from? We started asking ourselves. We stopped asking our membership director, can you please go and talk to X? And we started putting accountability back on the directors to have those conversations. In most instances, this already happens, but the new way of arranging ourselves made uh, it much more clearer to the board. The second side is relating to our projects. So how do we deliver on those projects? And I'll describe how we do that in a moment. So squads, basically where our members get inducted, they're a microcosm of our organization. They help people, uh, it creates a quiet space in which we can get to know people and you can catch up on a more casual basis. These squads catch up based on the interests and, um, and energy of those members and, not a dicta and aren't dictated by everyone else. What does that actually mean? It means that our, uh, our events shift very much away from fortnightly, monthly events. In fact, they go to every second month. Formal meetings happen every second month in our club. But our squads catch up on a much more regular basis. Why is that? Because our work is in delivering generosity. Our work isn't in meeting. Our work is in executing and not in administrating. Uh, and we knew that to get uh, to engage our members and to get them to deliver value, we needed to get closer to what they wanted, what is valuable for them. So we used some technologies, and I can talk about that in a moment, but that's the squads. Are there any questions about the squads? Hello, Alderico from Italy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nick. Very interesting presentation. Thank you. So how do the squads actually work? Well, our directors are accountable to meet each member or talk to each member once a month. And it doesn't mean that you have to sit down for dinner with them every single month. That would be very tiring. What it does mean is that there's a text, there's a, there's a phone call, there's a conversation. And we, uh, and we capture those conversations on a cloud-based application called called Trello. Uh, also, those squads host our meetings. So now it's not up to the president or the meetings director to host those meetings. Each squad takes a turn to present and conduct the formalities of our club. So every second month, it is a different squad hosting a meeting. What does that do? Well, it puts those direct, those members in the limelight. It celebrates them and who they are. Uh, what it also means is it shifts accountability and ownership of the club to them. If they speak it, they own it. But finally, it takes the burden of administration away from those at the top, that very pointy end of the organisation, down into where the work actually happens. Uh, and how do we make this happen? Well, we had a bit of fun with it. I told the teams, can you make, come up with a squad name? <laughs> come up with a name. Talk about what you want to, where you, what, you know, go grab coffee, go grab lunch together. Uh, and and our, our squads really celebrated with this, with, uh, we, we got into it with, with vigor. They called themselves Captain Planet, Marvelous Metamorphs, um, the, the City Keys, unique names that represented the uniqueness of those six people or five people in that squad. What does that do? Well, it binds them to be feeling, to, to feel like they're part of something. It puts their fun, thumbprint onto the very fabric of our organization. Lastly, we agreed that we would change the composition of those squads every year. So if you're in a squad one year, you don't have to sit through with those same people the next year. You can meet some other people, but we thought a year would be a nice time for those people to get to know each other. Now, secondly, uh, our projects. So I told you that the first, that there was two pinch points in our organization, membership and projects. Uh, 
I don't want to admit to you, but the projects director role was one of the hardest roles to fill. Why? Because they do all the work. They do all the work. And we put them in these very difficult governing administration roles and um, and they've got to collect evidence and information every single board meeting while trying to whip the machine to get work done. In actual fact, everyone on the board is responsible for delivering projects. We just didn't acknowledge that in our structure. So what did we do? Well, we embraced a, an approach called Agile. We call it uh, project swarming. So every three months, our club gets together to plan the next quarter. And we decide what we want to do, how many, pro- how many projects, and the very, like, the very design of those projects. And we form teams. And those teams are made up of members from all across the club. I refer to some members as builders because they're right in building. Other members as energizers because they're not really into building, but they just want to come along for the ride and they'll help out, point them at anything and they'll do it. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and others are more like ghosts, yeah, or, or passive supporters. They sit on the sidelines, they'll cheer for you, but really they don't show up that, that regularly. And it isn't because they don't love you or they don't want to support you. It's just that they don't have the capacity that, t- that, that time. So they remain on the bench. Each of these projects is supported by a project lead, a strong member in the club or a director, and they deliver those projects. Simple, right? That's how projects usually get done uh, in any in any uh, of our clubs. But we just wanted to acknowledge the uh, more accurately how they get delivered. We use some tools like the G Suite, like Miro that I was working in before. Slack to collaborate and Trello to track work. But basically, this is our this is our club. So, what does it look like? Well, some of the these are the the the, the, the details. But I'll t- I'll show you how we uh, use our how we track our work. But basically, everything goes onto an app. And whenever we have a project, the new uh, the new project gets spun up on an app, and we track a list of to dos. We assign those to the people. And we progress with the work. There's no need to meet in person to do that. There's no need to host a formal meeting. The vast majority, I'd say 70% of our work is done outside of meetings, outside of communicating directly. You know how conversation happens on Facebook or in any social media channel? We don't wait for those formal uh, meetings or cadences to take place. We just keep plodding along with the work. Uh, This was set up from a long time ago. We've only only just embraced a more agile way of working, but previous to this, most of our work was on an app where we could talk about, track progress, celebrate outside of meetings, outside of formality. So last but not least, what does this mean for our board? Because you're all sitting there going, yeah, but the first image you showed us, Nick, was was the pyramids. Well, our board now shifts away from uh, projects director, membership director, partnerships director, strategy innovation director, communications director, marketing director, all of those roles dissolve. They dissolve back to three key things. And those things are owning a service line, a technical specialization, owning a squad and owning a cause. So let me just break that down. Owning a service line means that every director comes with a skill set, and we honor and recognize that on the board and in our club. If anyone wants to do a come cook with me show, like that's a a product that I set up and run, I'll be on that project, no doubt about it. If anyone wants to go do a bunning sausage sizzle, we've got an expert on that. They'll be on that project. We'll also own a squad, which I described earlier and own a cause, a particular passion area. Now, this isn't mandated, but every director, every person in our club has a natural interest or passion in a certain area, whether they be homelessness, domestic violence, Aboriginal issues, etc. That natural interest will cause them to form partnerships and relationships in that area. You won't have to have a partnerships director or relationships owner to manage that because that's just going to happen organically. So whenever we want to invest, put money somewhere or spend our time on a certain project and we know the cause, we'll just be asking that director, what do you think? Who are the players in that field? How can we break in? 
instead of having to recycle from scratch. Um, and so this is kind of like how our work happens. Our board meet and we track every squad, S1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are our squads and our players, our members, and we update those with colour codes, with comments, so we know what's going on. We don't rely on a spreadsheet that a director of membership runs. We're accountable for owning those relationships ourselves. And then we talk about those updates by exception. So we have a traffic light system to know this person's a capacity. They've been involved in every project. I've got one, everyone's got one of those. They've been involved in every project. We've got to find out how to stop them. <laughs> Slow them down. <laughs> uh, there's others that are keen beans and there's others that are just wanting to sit in the sidelines. Well, that give us, gives us an immediate view of the capacity of our squad, of our club. And then lastly, let me know how I'm going for time, Joe. You're fine. How much more time do I have left? It's open. Cool. It's open. Um, it's and lastly, we manage our work based on those months. So you can see we've got a hopper of ideas. Yeah. And our directors put those ideas in, fed up from our uh, members. And then each month, We've got a card, whoops, whoops, that will describe what that project is. And that's how we know the float and progress of those of that work. It sounds really simple because it is really simple. It cuts away all of the administration. So so let me uh, uh so if you think about your board meetings, how long does it take for you to create a board report? What are you putting in that board report? What are, you, what are you even reporting on in the first place? So much time, Derek, exactly. So what did I say to our directors? That I don't want to see another board report written in Word. I don't want to see another board report at all because our work is members and projects. But don't you find that in some clubs the the preparation of the reports is an industry in its own right. Totally. Someone who may not do very much produces lots and lots of reports and so their year is reporting is the story that's in the reports not and not much else. Yeah, yeah. It's an abstraction. It's not actually what's going on. It's yeah. someone's interpretation of what's going on. Totally. Um, and what, are the, what is the point of reporting in the first place? The point of reporting is risk and decision-making. We want to know where our risks are and we want to be able to make decisions to keep moving forward. Well, if we block up that pipeline of conversation with reading and with interpretation, multiple reports that are, aren't compar comparable, the, the work that we're putting or the burden we're putting on the director is interpretation. So your board meetings aren't risk and, uh, and decision-making, it's interpretation and politics. Mm -hmm. So we cut away that layer and go, right, as, as much as we can to honour the work. Now, I will, I will remark on one thing is that this Service Above Self board, the projects board, goes further than just our community projects, fundraising, giving time. Because we have people in our club writing newsletters. We have people in our club uh, hosting social events. That's all work. Yeah. So it is given an individual card and honoured at work. So now we get a much better visibility of the float and uh, and complexity of work in a forecast, yeah? So we're looking May, June, July, August. We can see what's coming up and we know, hey, our club's going to be burnt out. Or we can at least make sense of why there's people not wanting to put their hands up. And then when we get into the meeting, we're looking what work do we have to move around to be able to help us execute? Because if we look at our squad health, the whole board's red. And if you look at our service above self board, We've got 15 articles of work to deliver. The two don't match up. So it brings me to my last comment, and that is about, about work. So we don't actually uh, do a very good job at capacity planning. Question there from yep. Derek, what is hopper? <laughs> hopper just means a whole bundle of ideas. What's on the back burner of ideas that we want to set up as a new project or a new initiative. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can get in here so you can see what this actually looks like. Um, but while I'm, while I'm doing that, I'll, I'll describe um, 
thq.org. I wasn't actually going to show you, but I like how this is becoming dynamic. It's not even where these things evolve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Oh, maybe it's for my personal. There we go. Okay. So while that's logging on, what I'll do is acknowledge is talk about how we measure work. So right now, when you say, oh, let's go do a project, we're going to go do some community service and let's say, for example, do a sausage sizzle. And someone else says, I'm going to write a newsletter. And someone else says, I'm going to go do a, a chocolate raffle. Do we know how much impact or how much uh, um, is required to deliver that? Now, in the corporate space, we look at how much money it would take, how many people it would take, what the detailed project plan would take. But somehow, somewhere, that kind of goes out the window. Yeah, we, we look at how much money it will take to deliver. Yeah, we look at the risk. Mm. But in a not-for-profit, in a, in a voluntary organisation, they are imperfect measures of capacity. What we actually want need to measure is bodies. How many bodies does it take to measure this? Yeah. So here we've got circle, which might be a newsletter. We've got diamond, which might be a fundraiser. We've got, what's this? Circular square, which might be a, uh, uh, a dinner night. And we've got triangle, which might be a social event. All of these get tracked as individual initiatives. And what we need to do more acutely is measure how many people will it take to deliver this? And we should know because we've been in Rotary so many years. <laughs> we can kind of tell, yeah? And what our, oops, what our club did was, why is this doing this? Measure. Because you're in the middle of a presentation. <laughs> because I'm in the middle of a presentation, exactly. <laughs> was measure what the load is of each of these projects. Now, I'll have a chat about that in a moment. But now we can see... Wow, if that's our month coming up, we're going to be engaging one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen people in that very month. Can we actually do that? Do we have the number of members that are, have the experience, the capability to do that? Yeah. Right now, you just take a thumb suck and, and you the guess. Will, and the will to do it. <laughs> yes. And the will to do it. Yeah, and the energy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, this you might look at this and go in December. Oh, that looks like a great bunch of projects. <laughs> Well, hello, December. <laughs> Everyone's going on holiday. <laughs> They're already on holiday. Yeah. So I'll come back to this in a moment, but we measure uh, the resources in uh, for each of these initiatives, giving us a much better view of, uh, of the load on our club. Now I'm gonna, it's not gonna let me log in now. Uh, I'm, I've... That might be the right password. Here we go. And we're in. Done. <laughs> so this is one of the tools that we use to run our club and report and deliver projects. So I'm going to show you. This is a bunch of my personal things, but hey, I'm just going to show you behind the scenes of our club. I hope it's just between you and me. <laughs> so we've got a list of perspectives that every club tracks. I have my squad called Marvelous Metamorph. Don't ask me what it means, but it has personal significance for the members of my squad <laughs> and it binds them to their club. I'm also following up a group of perspectives. I'm capturing comments conversations. Melissa over here is even putting a photo. These color codes tell us the capacity of our members at any one point in time. So what does a color actually mean? Uh, green, ready for a new project, purple, overloaded, uh, blue, passive supporter, light green, persp perspective. Okay. And we also have alumni listed here as well, which are a critical part of our, our club. How do you deal with engaging volunteers? There you go. What does that mean? Well, you've got a volunteer, someone who's someone who's 
willing to do some work, but maybe not to shell out for membership. Um, oh, cool. I totally embrace it. <laughs> I, my, my view is that uh, membership-based organisations, and I've been the uh, I've been the events director of um, the Change Management Institute, Western Australia. I've been the vice president of the Project Management Institute, Western Australia. It's it's across the board. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it, it, you know, you need to deal with the fundamental value proposition, which is <laughs> where you're going to get value for be, of being a member. Well, but um, just on that, I think there's an element of a, of membership clubs being a, a snake that eats its own tail. Yeah. That means that the head, which is deciding where to go, usually is chewing up the tail, which is the membership base, because we're constantly creating work for ourselves and then killing ourselves with delivering on that work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I totally embrace um, volunteers. I think they're the best thing since sliced bread. In fact, and I said this to my board, I would prefer it that every single club event, if this was culture aside, every single club event was... Um, supported by 90% volunteers. Fantastic. Because uh, our purpose is to inspire and facilitate generosity. So if it's just our club members getting kicks out of delivering projects and not sharing that, then we're really wasting our time. We're cutting ourselves off from a potential perspective as well as a, uh, uh, as well as uh, removing the administration or the project burden that we would take. Do you think... Do you think that, because I have a view that a modern Rotary Club is more like a community mm. and so it has alumni, it has people who want to volunteer occasionally, whatever, and the members are at the core. And the difficulty that some Rotary Clubs have is that the membership value proposition is cloudy mm. and they can't differentiate between someone coming along and not paying and working mm. and someone else who's coming along paying for membership and working at things. They, they see that as a risk. The only, so yes, uh, the, so the division I create, I, um, I make is that if you're a volunteer, you will never be, never be a project manager of a project because that's the only risk that I'd, I'd take on. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so maybe like we're at the other end of the scale. We don't have people that just keep, um, sorry, we have groupies. Yeah. Every club has groupies, people that just keep rocking up and don't really want to put their skin in the in the game, but are happy to, to join in. Yeah. And do stuff. And do stuff. And you know what? That is free labor. <laughs> I love groupies. Yeah. If they if the groupies want to come along and it gives them a kick to to flip sausages on the Sunday, and that saves four of my members, uh, or I can redirect the time and energy of those four members on setting up for other sausage sizzles. It sets us in a more strategic position because we can coordinate far greater opportunities to uh, to uh, to give back. I just see a question here: the volunteers' perspective until they leave town. Give them a card. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, our club is effectively virtual. This is all in the cloud. So, other than our events that require us to be there on the day, most of our work can be done virtually. So. I wouldn't have any issue. In fact, I'd encourage people to maintain the membership if they move away. Um, Sorry, what I was trying to point what I was trying to point out. You've got to add another card down the bottom. Just to add another card, make them a perspective. Oh yeah, totally, totally, totally. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you're not going to define a volunteer by color, make them a perspective. Oh, sorry, hundred yeah. percent. Every volunteer is a perspective. Okay. So they go on that that I call it. It's a membership life cycle. So um, pre membership. They start their journey. They go on a card, and um, and I or some of the directors grab those cards and pull them onto their uh, their squad. I'll just go back there so it's um, uh, it's it makes sense. Oops, wrong one. And they're expected to follow up with them within the week. So bang, yeah, there's that's a, me. There's a question from David McPherson. Where does the volunteer sit with regard to insurance? Are they covered if an act? David, the, mm. the situation there, I can, I can certainly speak for Rotary Insurance in Australia, is that volunteers, Rotary volunteers um, are covered by Rotary Insurance. You do need to, to take some steps like recording the fact that they were there and all that sort of thing, um, and you get details of that from your insurance coordinator. But, yes, Rotary volunteers are covered by insurance the same way as Rotary members are. Sorry, mate, I thought I just... No, it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's important 
one thing together. So just just to finish off, surface of self, you can see now here's our hopper, bang, bang, bang. And we've semi-qualified these. So green is uh, actually this camp opportunity's gotta to, gotta to go into the plan. Uh, these are all booked to go. And you, you know, it's a traffic light system, right? <laughs> um anyway. Some projects more likely to, to move. Others need a bit more work to refine them. So the colour code on the on the projects, I may have missed it. Yep. In the, in the hopper. Yep. You've got different colour codes for say for like Lokama's green and the uh, hundred and the centenary celebration. Red is red. Yep. What does that mean? So it just it just determines. Uh, this is all pre conditioning of those projects. So um, I can. So basically, when a project is spun up, you need to do a lean canvas, mm -hmm. which is basically a plan on a page mm -hmm. uh, and a risk identification. Um, and then we need a plan for it. So greens mean they're ready to go. We just need to book them to a month. Mm -hmm. Orange means they need more time to percolate and to refine. Red means they're missing some fundamental um, criteria. So our contribution to the 100 years of Rotary is missing some criteria from ah, our perspective. Gotcha. We don't... Yeah, we need to come up with some more um, tangible initiatives to do that. Right, gotcha. So you're avoiding the risk of getting involved in something where you don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, so something that may involve a potential overcommitment of the club. Yeah, the yeah. It's cloudiness. It's risk. It's um, it's whether we have the capacity to do it, yeah. um, whether we have the funds, all of that. So then you can see when we grab one, boom, I might drop it into September. That's then in the plan for September. Fantastic. And if I slide over, it's a bit touchy. You can see here. I mean, it's been a busy year for us, right, guys and ladies. But you can see, as I mentioned, every um, product or service is acknowledged as work. So a board meeting is work yep. that takes work from the board. Our networking drinks is work. Our planning is work. We had a, a virtual cooking class. It's a lot of work. Updating the website is work. So now we're honouring everything that's actually going on in the club, and the directors have their, uh, are expected to basically load on all of the work that they're doing, so we can manage the float of those activities. So you can see here that was just a month gone, and we've got November. It's quietening off intentionally because we're coming to the December period. So we've got the AGM coming up, a squad summit, a newsletter, etc. And January we haven't started to fill out. That'll probably be in the next board meeting. Fantastic. <laughs> It's a wonderful system. Hmm. So this, the great part about it is it's all available on my phone. Yeah. So I just jump on the phone, rearrange the cards, <laughs> and our board meetings, literally, okay, let's go to November, bang, 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 bang. How's things going? Where do you need help? Who can, you know, what other members who could be interested in that? And we assign it to that project executor and go. Hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. So the last thing I'll talk about um, is this. Now, I haven't got an Excel to show you, but effectively what I've done, and for those math nerds out there, you're going to get excited. <laughs> so let me just remove this for a second. So what I've done, or what we've done as a club, is we have uh, forecasted out our projects. So what does that mean? Well, firstly... Uh, we say, where's this doodalaki? We say this is month one. So this is just imagine a spreadsheet, yeah? Month one, month two, month three, month four, all the way up until uh, the end of the year. We've chosen to 18 months to make sure that there's a crossover into the next boards uh, period. Um, but this is a forecast, yeah? And what do I mean by a forecast? What I'm saying is that which one of these products, these artifacts, is landing there? Now, let's say, for example, this was the newsletter. We're doing a newsletter every month. We're skipping that second month. Doing this here. Now we can see what areas have the greatest workload associated with them? What's the most busiest period? But more so than that, and this is where it gets interesting, more so, I can now calculate the loading of that month on my membership. Yeah. 
because I say this, this, this times the, the capacity assumptions, bang, I get a number. What does that help me do? Everything. Now, I'll say that this is, what is it? A load of 10. This is a load of two. This is a load of, oh, sorry, that's probably four. But anyway, you get where I'm coming from, right? Um, this might be six. This might be eight. So you wouldn't do this every um, every day, no. but you do this at each year of planning cycles. I took the information we did at Agile Planning and I yeah. wrote this. Yeah. And so now I can see tracking over the next 12 months, we have this load bearing on our members. And I could do a bit of analysis about which ones are probably the same members yeah. if I really wanted to. Yeah. Um, but that tells me, you know what? It is reasonable to think that month two, we can put something else in there. Mm. Not the... Thing that always happens, hey, team, do you want to go do this? Let's go do it. And everyone's like, whoa, gets caught up in the excitement. And all of a sudden we commit to something without maybe doing the proper planning or an, or appreciation of all the other work that's going on. Because everybody got excited about someone else doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love the idea. Exactly. Can't, can't do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the flip side of this that, that you, you're covering off as well, which is that two months, the months during the year, obviously your available capacity is going to vary significantly. Yes. And so I can see where there's gaps in our capacity where, we, where we're looking for other projects to put in and we might pick up a partnership project or something else like that, or we're intentionally loading that lighter because it's the December, January period. Mm -hmm. um, but it also tells me, and this is what I did with our club as well, yeah. is I looked at membership growth forecast. Yeah. So our club's currently growing at um, conservatively one member a month. Uh, we're Brilliant. inducting three members at our next on Friday night, and we did the uh, three members at our last. So if that were to continue, how many new resources would we have? And I, I don't want to get too scientific or mathematical, but, but if I'm growing in my membership, that means I could ex expect an increase in the capacity of my system mm -hmm. and therefore plan more projects. Mm -hmm. I would not be able to plan more projects without that forecast or knowing the forecast is dipping the other way. If it's dipping the other way, that means, okay, no worries, it's just gonna work within the constraints. Let's just plan less projects. Fair enough. Do you think it's a good time to throw the, throw the microphones open and invite some-, some, some Sounds uh, good. Some, some questions that way. Okay, there's the invitation, folks. If you have a question, feel free to unmute and speak to Nick. Derek's just doing so at the moment. Yeah, I'm suitably described that a young person can define networking drinks as work. Um, well done. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I mean, I look at this and think, okay, I could learn this. Or um, being an older person, I could just chuck it into an Excel spreadsheet and still have month one, two, three, through to 18 and run the projects against it with the numbers. That's what uh, I've done, yeah. Which is interesting. Now, my question for you, if you can go through and say, who's always Graham Spencer's going to turn up to all of these and Derek's going to do eight yeah. of them or whatever it might be, how do you go yeah. about talking to those people who are there once but they're a Rotarian? Do you use something like this and put it up in front of the screen and everybody? You, you don't want to highlight somebody not doing work? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, it's a great idea to see... That. I'm just wondering how we could, how, how do you use it to talk to somebody about putting in a bit more effort? Awesome. Um, so first off, I, we're actually going through this exact process right now. So I call this the rec chemistry. It's it's chemistry of how our club operates. And I've asked each director to have a, uh, a conversation with their squads individually, each member, to say, what are your goals and aspirations? Like outside of Rotary, just in life in general, what are you up to? Uh, because you make up the fabric of our organization. I want to know. So they may to understand whether there are areas in which we can assist you or the network of Rotary can assist you. Because that's the, that's the fundamental value proposition. It's like you're a part of a network that's greater than yourself. You can get access to relationships that you couldn't already have. Um, the next one is to say, this is our forecast. This is what our club to get together, not just the board, our club decided to do. This is what we'd love to do to... Um, to deliver on our commitment, and you as a member have a part to play in that, not of shame, but of uh, of contribution. 
where do you see yourself playing the biggest um, ro- role? How do you see yourself contributing? Now, honestly speaking, I've got members that have, you know, two young kids under three. That's an IT manager of a major mining company. He's like, Nick, I can't, I can't I'm struggling even to come to this networking thing. Um, and my conversation back is, and it's been an interesting conversation with the board previously, more welcome now. If you want to pay me $300 a year and not rock up, I actually don't care. <laughs> like, it's your prerogative. You're a big person. If you want to pay $300 and that's what's valuable to you, great. Like, you know, <laughs> um, I'm going to work with the people that want to do work, but hey, if that's what makes, if it, as long as that um, is uh, open and transparent, that's fine. What we don't, on the flip side of that, uh, no guilt policy is 100% accountability. So if you say you're going to do something, I am not going to let you wiggle out of not doing it if you give me an excuse last minute. Like, we can't operate with that. That's no integrity. And, and you know, removing guilt from our culture was a big, big part of this, but also driving accountability. You say you're doing it by this date, we expect it done. And not like people are getting into trouble, but it's like, hey, that's, you know, we're people too, you know, we've got lives of our own and yeah. uh, there are things, dependencies here that we need to, to work on. If you can't do it, just let us know in time. Don't like drop the ball last minute. Um, so if people aren't doing something, like there are people, there are members in my squad who uh, who joined up with all enthusiasm and I basically haven't seen them the whole year. Um, there is definitely a pang of frustration about those because I was hoping that they would convert into, into builders, uh, but they remain currently groupies. And um, and I guess it's kind of like diamonds, right? Like I just have to cast the net wider to generate more groupies to hopefully churn them into <laughs> into into builders one day. Um, and that's why I have a much more open policy around membership. Uh, we did have a fairly restrained approach. Like people had to fill out surveys, they had to take interviews with multiple directors. It was it was gross. Like. It's, it's perpetuating this, you know, privilege or this prestige about service. Rotary is all about, you know, de- demolishing that and saying that everyone can have a go and everyone can contribute. Well, I put all these barriers in place. Oh, Nick, it's because this person was a bad person. It's like, fair enough. But the, poly- the processes before didn't identify that, you know. So, so just, <laughs> going I just, to, just going uh, back to your IT person with two kids under yep. three. Um, he obviously works for a major mining company. I'm assuming he's not the only guy in the office. Um, can he not ask somebody if they'd like to go along and do it for him? Oh, um, yeah. It feels like he's contributing and then that person might become a prospect. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, oh, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that on board. Yeah, that's really great. It's like, a, it's like a corporate membership. He's paid for the rest of the IT nerds to actually go out and do something. Yeah, you might find one of them's really good at turning sausages at Bunnings and putting the onions on the bottom so you don't get burnt. And find but, some more volunteers. Yeah, love it. So there's a. I, I think there's a at the crux of this, and it comes back to my point about members about, about members understanding the difference between them and volunteers. Um, this. This thing about, say, becoming a Rotary member, whilst once upon a time Rotary was a very elite organisation, mm. getting getting to be a, a Rotarian was a big deal and people aspired to it and all that sort of thing. Mm. It's changed over the years and some Rotary clubs these days almost operate a bear trap. You know, step inside the door, you're in the, ah, we've got you now, you've, you, know, you have mm. to be a member, which to me is a, is a shame because we really need to get back to some middle ground there where, in fact, achieving membership of a good Rotary Club is something that is, is an achievement, mm. that it's not something that, you know, you don't just fall into it by walking into the room. Yeah, yeah, I, I do agree. It's not like we we hold out a can and say, you know, put a dollar in and you're a member. Yeah. Um, for sure. I think that for us the, the, um, the benefits are around the coaching, mentoring, relationships that are available in the club, we don't extend that past our members yeah. that's that's for want of a word, word exclusive yeah basically because we don't have the time to to do it with with everyone <laughs> um and we're making not only an investment to that person's future but also an investment back into our own club's future through that mentoring um so i think there is an element of making it special absolutely yeah 
Uh, what I do want to, um, and it, it's it's important to distinguish, special is not privilege. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a subtle uh, difference at the coalface when you come to that. You know, yeah. it, it just, it, it shows up differently. Putting people through hurdles and interviews because you're wanting to assess the validity and quality of that human being is not what we're going to create. You know, looking for that a person that is committed and and has the same values, that's very different. Absolutely, mm. absolutely, absolutely. Um, this is, this has been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's been a long time coming. I hope I so. Think we, I think we had a conversation about this or about two or three years ago. Uh, <laughs> fantastic tonight. Um, I'd like you to to uh, talk about. I mean, adding a member a month. Is absolutely fantastic, and that's on, that's something that some Rotary clubs would only ever dream about. Mm. So you're obviously doing some good things in terms of connecting with people, in terms of attracting people to to the organisation. But what we've seen in some other places is a club will grow rapidly one year. I was talking a minute about mm. this the other night, and with a, with a change in leadership. Mm a lot of those those new people head out the door yes. so it becomes a bit of a, a a bit of an illusion yes how are you how are you going to you're not going to be president forever how are you going to uh, sustainable sustain yep. yeah uh someone told me that um being the president of rotary club means you're the head of the wolf pack <laughs> Wolfpack. and wolf pack we may be but the lead of the wolf pack is never at the front yeah. the wolf leader is always at the behind uh, and the most energetic, the most charismatic or the most passionate at the front. Um, so I am in any instance trying to create space for other people to stand at the front. Um, we hosted an event the other day and I was so warm to see a member who just come back to our club, was up there talking about, they joined within the last two weeks, yeah. right? And they were talking about- This is someone who's rejoined. 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 They're taking about two year break. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and wasn't thinking about coming back. Right. Like I engaged them and then we had over the conversation. Um, and and they were up there talking with pride. We at Rotary Elizabeth <laughs> Key are doing X, doing Y. And it made me so proud because it was like, wow, this is this is making a difference to that person. Yeah. And um and and by having by ensuring that it's not the same person at the front, you're spreading the load, you're spreading the you're, you're, you're giving them a fingerprint onto the organisation. They have personal ownership. Um, yeah. And the last thing I'll say on that is uh, I think that our, um, our uh, squads will self-manage that. Mm-hmm. So um, I haven't told – it's a secret for all of you guys. I haven't told this, but um, at the moment I'm driving accountability to follow up at our directors in a month's time, I'll tip that open and say there's no director following up anyone. Directors will hold members accountable for following up. Yeah. You've got to taste what accountability feel, you know, tastes like first before you can drive it for other people. Um, and anyway, so I think it's it's the, the ways that the squads operate because they're a softer landing point. Yeah. So one of our squads is becoming the legal team. Like, <laughs> talk about groupthink. Seriously, every lawyer is like magnetised to this, this squad. Um, I had someone, uh, a, a director of another volunteer organisation, caught up with them for a drink. They came to an hour-long virtual meeting. The next day they submitted their application. There you go. Not even having been to any of our events. I, I see a question yeah. here. Yeah. You sent this app. Is it freely available or just within your club? It's 100% freely available. We use, uh, and I'll put them in here for your uh, reference, um, just the, the technology that we use. So we use Trello. Um, it is it is free. It, uh, you can have a paid version of it, but it will just change the um, the number of boards that you can have. But we don't have a paid version, and we we. But the free fine. version works for Elizabeth K. Totally, totally. We use um, another app called uh, Slack, which I haven't spoken about, but basically it's like a personal Facebook for our club. You can personally message, you can chat, um, and you can vote. So a lot of our votes, like we had a meeting the other day, <laughs> we're just trying to figure out if we should change the board meeting. So I said, can you put some suggestions up? Similar to a Facebook group. Yeah. And I said, vote mushroom for next day, apple for the day after, tomato for the day after, and the board voted apples and tomatoes. 
Your decisions happen like that. So these are the two applications I recommend. Slack is fantastic, um, is cool. but it is uh, the basic number of users we have. We have to have a paid version. So we pay. Uh, sorry, we have to have a paid subscription. But because of our not-for-profit status, we can get that for heavily discounted or for free, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so look into that. It, that has been the platform for which we've been able to do all of this. Yeah, fantastic. There's a question from David about philosophical thing about presidents serving more than one year. What's What's your position on that? Well, don't tell my wife. Um, yeah, I've been talking about this. I agree. I, I think that, um, uh, yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, and Because basically you have six months. So, so you, you, you know, kind of following in the wings and then you get in 1st of July and you set your team up. Five months, four months later, you're calling for a new board. Yeah. Like. But there are five seasons in Rotary. Okay. And probably the most important one is the is the three months before you become president. There is because a if, lead because up if you don't if you don't get that right, yep. oftentimes the the really productive bit, which is the uh, the, the three months in the, the first three months of your actual year, yes, uh, that's what happens there yes. is often driven by what you did in the three months before. Hundred percent. I I agree with you. I think a year is too short. Um, I think it's I think. To be able to have a market and an impact, definitely a two-year period, but the administrational burden is potentially too great. I love what um, Rotary uh, City are doing. They have a shared role as a husband and wife team. Yes. That's that's awesome, and I think we could potentially move towards that. I'm, um, again, don't tell my wife, but actively exploring <laughs> the and second I term. I also have a shared residency. That's great. Two sisters. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, and I think... I think if you have a shared presidency, you should commit to two years automatically. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> I agree. But, but one thing I will make a comment is um, a point I made earlier is that all of our planning is for 18 months. I will not plan for a year. I want to make sure that the foundation is laid for the next year. But also inside of that, we grab those plans and review or uh, articulate those more clearly on a quarterly basis. So we plan our aspirations for 18 months but on every quarter we plan what actually is going to happen, those projects that will happen. Yeah. Looking at that, at Rotary Adelaide, the second biggest Rotary club in Australia. How many members do they have? Oh, they, 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 at the moment they, they're getting up close to 200. Okay. Um, they were in a serious decline and they adopted a pretty simple process of getting their their, their president, the presidential, like past president, current president, elect and president nominee, to work together as their basically mm. driving their strategic planning. Mm. And as a consequence of that, over the last six years, their membership's gone up by eight, which doesn't sound like much. But by the time you factor in deaths and transfers, it's a gross increase of 70. So, the, and, the, and they swear by that process these days. They actually... Uh, because what it means is if you want to become a, a future president of mm -hmm. Rotary Adelaide, you've got to commit to making this ongoing strategic planning process. Is I totally what agree. There's, there's no other not-for-profit that you can say, oh, I'm going to join the board for a year and then nick off. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's dopey, yeah. we, we have the same, same thing, actually. I didn't think about it um, as distinctly as you put it, but um, the past presidents have a, a working kind of, a WhatsApp group, mm -hmm. and they're like the brains trust where we refer to about, you know, history, partnerships, capacity, yeah. Do they beat you up occasionally? Well, I get a couple of bruises, but it's <laughs> we hold ourselves accountable. It's good. <laughs> but, but that robust that robust sort of stuff can, can be pretty healthy. I mean... It, I think that's the most robust part of our whole club. Yeah. The most... And, and it's almost like... Uh, it's almost like they are the board and... The board or the directors are my management committee, yeah. which is, 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 is not correct, but um, you know, it's and I'm just kind of speaking lot, um, loosely here, but yeah. yeah, there's definitely a a higher level of skin in the game for those members. And if I asked, they would do whatever it took mm. to you've got some remarkable people there to jump in and, and deliver. Mm. Looking at looking at this issue of available time. This is a generalisation. Doesn't it come down to, to sort of prioritisation? I mean, I, I think of people like Tristan who sort of got, got you know, a bunch of little kids and, and, and commitments all over the place. Mm. And once he agrees to do something, there's no stopping him. 
here mm. because he's he's got it all he's got it all mapped out brilliantly. Mm. And it's because he prioritizes things. If he can't do something, mm. he just simply says no, that's not doable in that time frame. So never leaves anybody in any doubt. Yeah, yeah. I think um yeah, there's totally I couldn't agree more. There's a level of tenacity which if we say and give our word, we blood, sweat and tears do it. Like um and this isn't about me, this is an example because it's personal. This year I committed to um, doing a virtual cooking class. Never even gone, never even gone. Come you know, cook with me. Yeah. I've never even um, gone live. <laughs> and I tested so many systems before that. We had some breakdowns in the, in the thing, but this year we've raised nearly $10,000 because of that work. Um, and it wasn't me. It was like a, a team of Dean and Melissa and Eleanor, Blood, Sweat and uh, Ishwa, just going out and finding a way to make it happen because we said we would. But there's also a bit of clarity, and when we say we're not going to do it, we do not do it. Yeah, yeah. Those conversations are harder. I think sometimes harder to have. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I agree with you, uh, Tristan. It's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. There's a, there's a, a re- remarkable, really, really is remarkable. And um, there was, yeah, looking at looking at Rec long term. Like Rec was formed as a young people's Rotary Club. Yeah, you know, not the only one in Australia, uh, but of course, one of the things that happens in life, mm. or two things happen in life: you either age or something worse happens. So, how how are you managing that? How are you plan? How is Rec planning to manage that? It's a little bit off topic, but I mm. think it's important to in terms of what the long term of what you're doing. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say we're actively managing that. I think we're we're um, what's on our focus is is growth. Um, and attracting the right builders. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, like attracts like. Yeah. So I've had a couple of people who are a bit um, older, maybe in their 50s, who have expressed interest, but by the vast majority, because of the way we show up, because of the types of events, because of the pace, because of the technology we use, we tend to just attract younger people. Mm-hmm. Um I think, the, I think um, now saying that, I have uh, formed some or uh, building some close tie of relationships with feeders in the other membership organisations. So the young people's chartered accountants, young people's mining, young people's petroleum, young people's, in, you know, um, local government, you name it. Yeah. I see them as our feedstock. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, that's great because... Yeah, it's it's a fantastic organisation, yeah, and uh, it's made some some wonderful contributions to 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 the to the framework of ideas mm. that can renew Rotary, mm. you know, including what including what you're doing tonight. I we've been going for an hour and five minutes now, so what I might do is invite uh, invite any last any last questions uh, before I before I invite you to uh, perhaps sum up. Make you make any final points you might like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if there are any any uh, last questions, folks, uh, now is the time. I haven't got a question, Nick. I'd just like to thank you because um, I've been watching a lot of these in the last nine months, I suppose, um, Zooms and all different sorts of bits and pieces. District membership chair, I've left my guys go since the 1st of July because with COVID and all the rest of it, I haven't given them numbers. And our district, instead of losing 45, is currently up by about six. So sometimes just shutting up, letting people have a go at it, is, uh, is not working out too bad. Um, I just It's been really interesting. Um, I've got to do a training for all the president-elects and then my district on Saturday. Um, and it's uh, funny, Kero, after that conversation you and I had a few months ago, I'm not so grumpy anymore now with people that tell me it's my fault they haven't got members in their club. <laughs> <laughs> which is just crazy hard. Um, but I go back to my point that we're a social yeah. enterprise. A social enterprise needs to plan, and um, I've been in sales for thirty years. And in terms of making a good, having a good customer, now our Rotary members are customers for us. Um, it's all about relationships. So I think if we're going to talk about anything for an hour, it's going to be: Would someone want to join your club? Looking at your Miro stuff and me putting it in an Excel, because that would just be easier for me, um, is 
turning around and going, okay, now, you know, is this why people are leaving? Or are you not doing enough, et cetera? Because you can see the bodies that are there and who's doing the work. So I found that out of this whole thing particularly interesting, and I'm really grateful for it. And so I'd like to thank you. And I need to go to bed because it's about 10 past 11. Eric, before you go, just before yeah. you go, I have one last question for Nick. It was one I meant to ask earlier on. Yeah. Um, we run... Uh, an event every year called PETS, President Elect's mm. Training Scheme. I don't know whether you went to PETS this year. Mm. Yeah, but you'll get what what did you think of PETS? Because I have a view that it's totally it's focused on mainly the wrong things. That it's 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 about it's about um, guarding your bum rather than mm. rather than right. developing leadership, you know, developing adaptive leadership, which is where we need to go. Mm. So what's your, what's your perspective on that? I hundred percent agree. Like it, it, we're like celebrating, you know, it's a gross ex- example. Of, but anyway, I won't say that. But, but we're celebrating um, things that are um, uh, maybe not as valuable to the future mm. of our organisation, and spending the time. And I, I think it, I think it's really easy. Like if we if someone was to do a a time and um. um a uh, time in motion study. That means they measure the amount of time on different tasks. It would be around all the wrong things, like around risk, around what you've done great, what he's done great, what he's done great, what he's done great. <laughs> or even she. It, well, some cases it's she if we're lucky, but yeah. Um, and and then I also think like some of them it's a bit token. It's like, oh, we've got this young person here. You know, oh, it, young person. It's like, Derek, look at your prime minister. You know, look at um, the prime minister. No, don't been... bring, don't bring her up. Bloody <laughs> socialists! Come on, someone's got to pay the tax. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is, I, I think we Trump should. Uh... Go, so you know, we're doing all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it, mate. We'll swap. We'll swap. Yeah. Hey, Derek. Um, just yeah. a comment about the Excel. Um, yeah. If you send an email through to Kara, we can connect. I'll send you my Excel because I don't run that task in Miro. I just wanted to yeah. visualize it for you. Yeah, no, that's good. So, yeah, yeah, that would be fantastic if you could um, if you could send that through. Interesting, Caro, with pets. We did a survey which was done a month ago, and I've only just got it. And it's uh-huh. this week of fifteen questions, and the, what comes up for me is Rotary presidents just don't know enough stuff. They don't know how to use Rotary Org. They don't know how to use Club Runner. They don't. They're scared about what's going to happen. How do I do this? How do I do that? And I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay, um, we probably needed to know this three months ago because yep. uh, TV's rubbish. So you've got time to sit down and do a Rotary.org thing for half an hour and just learn something. And that would be um, So cool. I think pets, pets has a value, but in training and making people feel more confident so when they stand up, they actually know what they're going to do. Mm. But one of, the, one of the things they did in South Australia, again, it comes back from Dave, to David Egan, was they ran a process with some of some of the some you know, young a, a young leadership program in in the uh, in Adelaide, and they came back with an, an analysis on Rotary that it didn't have a membership problem; it had an adaptive leadership problem. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I thought oh, nailed it. Yeah. Bang. That's clever. Yeah. 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 And, I, yeah. and I tell you what, David Egan swears by that because because this was a this was a you know, this wasn't any, any sort of uh, penny ante thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, I think like we, we sit in this um, in this world view of compliant dependence yep. as opposed to um, collaborative growth. Yep. And we're constantly trying to get get it right as opposed to building for what doesn't exist. Yep. Yep. Uh, Nick, very interesting presentation. Uh, I left to you my my email. Um, we we are. Just one one minute. I, uh, I use we, we set up a new club. I am charter member of Rotary Milano Digital, and uh, it's centered on uh, this way to create um, a group. It's our club like uh, work like a little uh, consulting company. Uh, we use Slack. Um, I think that in your presentation. Um, it's very interesting. I don't. I never heard about Miro, and uh, I now I download it and I will use. But the, in in our club there is no no people, uh, no members that uh, um, are not involved in a committee. Uh, yeah. Our club is committee center. Yeah. Uh, so um, our all 
our uh, our committee have a, a, a weekly meeting so around 50 meetings uh, every year wow. uh, project uh, uh, public image uh, uh, especially the um, new member committee we, we have a waiting list of 20 people uh, in to enter in our club and uh, to enter in our club we have we have to wait um, uh, people have uh, to wait one year and a half uh, Actually, we are uh, 41. Um, the, but this idea, it's, it's absolutely interesting if you is supported by technology. We use Slack, we use uh, Club, uh, Club Runner, uh, we use Zoom. Uh, our club is a, a digital club, a mix of uh, physical and digital. Now only digital because in Italy is very bad now. COVID is very bad. Uh, but in this way, um, it's absolutely interesting because uh, uh, you have not uh, people that doesn't work. You have people only involved in project, uh, only uh, connected to the vision uh, to the of the president of the vision of the club, and it's absolutely important to um, to create commitment inside of the club. Mm. Um, but this is the problem of uh, the problem is that the, the technology if, if you don't use technology it's it's terrible and uh, i can see i am disc in my district uh, and i know all of my club we have uh, our district is metropolitan of milan 48 uh, clubs yeah. and, uh, and the problem is that uh, <laughs> The other 47 club technology is very la lack of technology and it's very bad. Mm. Uh, the, the only things that they have in common, that technology doesn't work. <laughs> Not only in Italy, eh? everywhere, everywhere in the world. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I attend a Rotary meeting in 41 nations before COVID and in 89 and during COVID. Uh, so, uh, I saw that this is absolutely a very big problem for Rotary. Yeah. I think that one, one thing is for Rotary is to, to start uh, uh, a good technology training. Because if you don't uh, uh, do this, uh, I think uh, Rotary will have a lot of problems. First, yeah. because uh, a lot of new member members does they are not interested in uh, um, to go to the restaurant to have a dinner in the restaurant or to have a lunch um, they have a different kind of a, of a way to meet and if you don't uh, think about the the member of the future i think that in this moment uh, the, the companies and the, the the association will survive only if they think to the customer or the or the members of the future. If you don't do this, it's, it's yeah. waste time. Yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, a a movie called Moneyball. I don't know if you've seen it uh, with Brad Pitt, and it might be a, a poorly choice uh, analogy or uh, reference, but he said, "Adapt or die." <laughs> and it was um, it was pretty stark uh, outcome in the because it was a it's all about um, uh, baseball. And the team that used the numbers, they made, they had the results. Um, and the other thing I'd say is it's about immersion, Older Rico. I have members who are young who tell me oh, I'm over the hill and they're 38. <laughs> so it's not about age. It's just about immersion. And once you get them in there using the tools, then I found that they become more comfortable with it. People don't want to be fools or make a mistake. So we have to make it okay for everyone to be fools together. Mm. Yeah, when uh, think that when I presented uh, with, with the other founder of this club to the um, to our district, our district is absolutely conservative, Milan. Mm -hmm. uh, when I presented the, uh, the the idea of the new club uh, four years ago, um, all the PDG they did to me, but, but if you don't go to the restaurant, uh, you you you, you are. It's not rotary. It's not. It's not rotary to to meet uh, online. Yeah. And uh, so I told her yes because maybe you are PDG. Uh, that means a permanent dinner guest. <laughs> uh, so uh, 
and uh, uh, and so um, but but now d- during the um, uh, last march during pandemic uh, in in italy we support all the other clubs uh, uh, more than 250 hours of uh, um, uh, le- um, of um, uh, lesson uh, to a consultant to help other club to uh, to use Zoom to, to enter in the digital uh, era. Uh, I think that uh, if we don't think to the future, it's uh, really bad. Yeah. Uh, yes. Alderica, I recommend you have a look at Trello um, to track your work. It actually integrates with Slack. So you can close or open new, t- new cards from Slack or you can... Uh, or Slack can interpret the changes that are happening in your Trello board and update a certain channel. Um, it's quite, the integration is pretty clever, but uh, just having everything on one page uh, as an app really, really transforms project management. You, if, you're, if you're a consultant, you'd be familiar with Kanban, um, which is what Trello is. Yeah, yeah, Trello. I know Trello, it's so very nice. Mm. Awesome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Really appreciate having you with us, Soda Rica. Yeah. So I, I hope to stay in touch with you. Uh, I left my email, um, also my my number is... Uh, uh, ah, yes, thank you. Uh, just uh, if, if you, if we can stay in touch, um, uh, I, I absolutely, I am interested to, to go ahead in this, uh, in this way. I will send you a message. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out. Yeah, th- thank you very much. Very interesting. And uh, uh, it, it's possible to have the, um, the um, presentation. Yes. And, and maybe also the record of the presentation because it was absolutely interesting. Oh, yeah. I can yeah. share with him in the class. No worries about that. I'll send you, I'll send you the link. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Absolutely interesting. Thanks again for the interesting presentation. Stay in touch. Follow us. We are everywhere. Uh, Rotary Milano Digital. No worries. Thank you. And good night. And well, I suppose it's, I suppose it's probably good morning where yeah. you are. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, so, uh, it's going on for half past six here. Yeah. Enjoy your evening. I go back to work because here is uh, 11. Yeah, no worries. Lovely talking to you. And, and uh, my, my payoff is be local, be international, and of course, be digital. Way to go. Love it. Yes. Thanks, Alarico. See ya. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thanks, Alarico. Nick, this is where you get to sum up. Make your final point so so we can get these guys. Oh yeah, no, I've made all my points. Have you? Okay, applause time. Righto, everybody, everybody, unmute and let's give this guy let's give this guy a bit of applause for that for a great. Well done, Nick. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. (laughs) Sweet. Say hello to my sister in Perth. Hopefully, she can come home one day when you let her out. Yeah. (laughs) Great talking to you, Derek. Yeah. Be good, folks. No worries. Take care, mate. Countries in your DNA, you just got to find it.